Hey guys, I'm here for The Flash, Season 3, Episode 5, Monster, and I was definitely really looking forward to this episode. As I said, I really did love uh, last week's episode, and this season in general I have really been enjoying, and uh, especially with the way that things have been revealed. I know a lot of people are not a huge fan of this season, but uh, I have to say that this episode, you know, while I've been saying positive things about the season overall, I will admit... This episode was kind of filler. I definitely will admit that. I didn't hate this episode by any means, but this was an okay episode. I definitely will say that. I think that there are some genuinely great things about this episode that I will definitely get into, um, but most of what we really want to see, we are seeing definitely, but not really everything. Like, we didn't really see a lot of alchemy in this episode. The uh, We had a very throwaway um metahuman storyline, but let's just get into this episode because I don't have a ton to say about it, uh, but we'll just get right into it. As I haven't had this a lot this season, the season in general just I haven't had a ton to say about, but there were some really great things I do want to talk about here. So we start off, we see Barry's making breakfast for Cisco as a thank you for letting him crash at his place while Barry finds a uh, pad of his own. As we know, he's trying to, you know, move out because it's just too awkward between him and Iris, and I like seeing this. You know, we see that they're very close. It's obvious that Cisco does need a little space from Barry, who's trying too hard to be a great house guest, Cisco tries to, and also because you know the whole thing that happened in episode two. So Cisco decides to try to take the food, uh, the food Barry made for him to go, and tells him that he'll that they'll see him at Star Labs. So Cisco then has to put up with HR. We see the Wells from Earth nineteen, who Tom Cavanaugh absolutely, as usual, killed it as this character. But this is the most drastic Wells yet. I mean, the first Wells was your stereotypical. Um, you know, turned out to be the villain of the show, and they did that really well. Uh, then they did, uh, you know, season two, he was kind of an asshole, but you really cared about him as well. Now he is a hipster of sorts. I mean, this guy in general, HR, is really, really strange, and I, I really do like where they're headed with him overall, but he doesn't really trust him. He's bringing bagels for a coffee for everyone. I mean, this guy is as casual of Wells as we've had, and it's just really weird to go from a very hard-hitting asshole Wells who is so focused on work and uh, this Wells, who is just so much more casual and so much more family-like, I just thought it was overall really interesting. So Cisco tells HR to back off a bit, because obviously he's just not used to this at all, and Barry asks where Caitlin is, and HR tells him that she was at the lab earlier, but left, and left, uh, Barry a message. So Barry and Cisco become a big concern until HR plays a message, and Caitlin's message lets them know she needs to take care of a few things, she'll be back in a few days. Now, she had the warning to keep her Hot Pockets out of sight from Cisco. Cisco says it didn't have a name on it as he swallows the Hot Pocket. I thought that was kind of funny, but Iris, Barry, and Wally had how to work, leaving Cisco to work with HR. Now, let's get into Caitlyn. And speaking of Caitlyn, let me just say that while this season, I think, has been kind of a slow burn and not a ton has been happening, this has by far been Caitlyn's best season, and I'm going to talk about why. Up to this point in the show, Caitlyn has been nothing really but a throwaway character. She's there when they need her to do research on something, or when they need her to explain something in an exposition dump, or she's there to be someone's love interest, either season one, when she's a potential love interest for Barry, or she was with, you know, um, um, Ronnie in season one, or in season two, when she was with, you know, Jay, who turned out to be, you know, uh, Zoom. So, one of one of those two things, and, you know, you can't even say that Killer Frost was really part of Caitlyn's character, because that was a, you know, that was her Earth 2 persona. But now that we've gone into this alternate timeline, she is, in fact, Earth 2, they're doing a lot more with her, and it's really letting Daniel Panabaker shine really well on the show. I've always wanted to like Caitlyn as a character, but I've always found her to be a throwaway character, and you definitely cannot say about the season. Everything with her in this episode is great. I'm loving where they're going with her, and this is by far the story that I am most into. I can't wait to see where this goes. She's left to visit her mother, Dr. Carla Tannhauser, who, to say that she is very overbearing is an understatement. She's a brilliant biomedical researcher to see if she can help her with her new powers, and the minute these two see each other, there's a ton of tension between these two. They just don't at all get along, and Kayan tells her mom that she is a patient who she thinks her mom might be able to help. Being very busy and dismissive, Carla tells her to send over the file, and she gets to, and she'll get to it when she can. So, becoming upset, Kaylin slams her hand down her mother's desk, and she says that she's the patient mother as ice and frost freezes the desk, and. Carla then calls her assistant because she had no idea the extent of what was going on with her daughter, and she tells her a clear schedule for the day, so I really loved every everything, like I said, going on here is great, but 
Back at Central City, Barry goes to see the captain to find Julian's uh, been complaining about uh, Barry's tardiness and his work ethic, and Barry defends himself by saying he does love his job, but the captain reminds him that that does not mean the rules don't apply to him. So Julian leaves upset that Barry only gets a 15-second reprimand and the problem is over, when, you know, any other person would be reprimanded a lot. He doesn't understand why Barry is getting off so easily, because, again, he doesn't trust Barry, as we know. And this really does go somewhere. I will definitely say that. Julian's a storyline I thought they weren't really going to do much with, but it really does go somewhere in this episode. I'm happy they, they're going somewhere with it, because... I want to like this character, and they're doing good stuff with him overall. I like what they did with them overall in this episode, but basically, as Barry leaves, he starts to vent, and that's when uh, he, he starts to vent uh, to Joe, and that's when uh, Barry's phone is going off. It's Cisco alerting Barry that many metahuman alerts are going off downtown. Barry speeds to the area, see a giant Godzilla-like monster walking the streets, growling. Barry says there's a monster in Central City, and... This was really ridiculous. I definitely will say that. Uh, I haven't complained about, you know, I've complained with the metahumans before, but this by far has to be one of the most unfocused metahuman episodes we've ever had. I mean, they barely touch base with this. They, they really do. There wasn't a lot of time when they were, like, talking about it. I mean, just in general, this wasn't all that interesting, especially the a monster. I mean, the show can do a lot better than that, and them not really focusing in it really does show that. So obviously Barry, Cisco, and HR don't really know what to make of it. They start tracking the thing, which is causing Transformers to explode, but it's not touching them as it goes by, and people are screaming, they're running, the Flash helps some rapid uh, passengers in a crash bus get out with Iris assisting him, telling him she's there to cover the story. Just seconds later, the monster has vanished, and back at Star Labs, Team Flash is trying to figure out how a metahuman could get that big, or if the creature's something created by a new metahuman, because... They don't really know what's going on here, but Cisco and HR tell Barry he better pick Julian's brain if he's going to get any useful info on this case, because Julian, of course, doesn't really trust Barry. So if Barry tells Julian that there's a monster, there's no way that Julian's really going to believe him, so he needs to do what he can. And back at the CCPD lab, Barry tries to bury the hatchet with Julian. He even strokes his ego, saying he could learn a lot from him, asking if he could shadow him for a day. Julian isn't really buying it, so Barry offers to move out of the lab so it could be all Julian's, which... I thought made perfect sense. I mean, you could really tell that he is trying to help Julian. He really is trying to give Julian, you know, the be benefit Julian here. He actually is trying to help him, and I like that. And Julian agrees that it's a good idea. And again, I like seeing these two actually solve things in this episode. Out in the field, we see Julian and Barry talking about the monster. Barry realizes that Julian actually hates the metas, and Barry brings up the Flash and how inspiring he is for the city. And basically, Julian believes that he's made the police lazy, and uh, the monster ends up showing up again. He causes chaos, but just as it quickly disappears, Julian's very annoyed how Barry keeps defending the metas and praising the Flash. He just doesn't understand. He says he's done with their shadowing arrangements, and this I can get behind. I mean, I really do like this conflict here, that Julian is very against metahumans, and Barry obviously is for metahumans. I think it works very well here. That's one of the reasons why I love Civil War as much as I did, like I've said before, is because of the the, uh, the differences of those two and, you know, the reasons that they had for fighting in the first place. I think it works very well for Barry and Julian, and that really is a lot of what this episode focused on. I thought they actually focused it on pretty well here. So we see at Carla's lab, Kaylin's using her powers to freeze temperatures over 2,000 degrees in the hopes that her mom will learn how she can either control her powers or stop them completely because, again, she doesn't really know what's going on with her. So Kaylin freezes something in seconds, and even her mother and lab assistant Nigel are impressed. I mean, they have never seen something like this before. And Carla isn't ready to run another test on Kaylin when she admits she's already run that on her test on herself. And this is when... Kaylin tells her mother that she's actually terrified of what she's becoming. And again, Daniel Pambaker absolutely killed it in this scene. She's obviously hoping her mom will be more motherly to her, showing some parental concern because this isn't something she wants to expand upon. This is something that she wants to con you know, conceal. She really does not like what's becoming of her. She thinks that she herself is the monster and Carla still tries to keep her emotions out of it, but reacts when Caitlyn brings up her being cold and unfeeling towards her ever since Caitlyn's dad died. And I thought this was interesting to see. We haven't really heard much about her parents' history, so this was a little bit emotionally hollow. But just seeing the look on Caitlyn's face, Daniel Panabaker's performance really did make up for it, and that really made this scene that much more emotional than it probably would have been. 
So Carla defends herself by telling Kaylin she could never understand the emotions involving in losing the love of her life, and Kaylin tells her mom about losing Ronnie, so yes, she does know that kind of pain, and the two get into it, and it turns out that Kaylin's mom actually is resentful, and that her Kaylin uh, moved away to Central City, and she hasn't been in touch with her for three years, so this is why we've never really heard much about them. Kaylin's only gone to her because this was, you know, she was in a desperate act for someone to help her, and that's the only person she could think of that could help her. So I like the way we're really focusing on their relationship. It's very complex overall, but I like where it's going. So meanwhile in Central City, Team Flash is trying to figure out the mystery of the monster. Cisco doesn't trust HR one bit, and Barry's also realizing that HR is really not contributing much to their brainstorming sessions. In fact, he seems to just be rewording what they say. They really don't think that he's useful, and Barry and Cisco is it's time for Cisco to vibe him because obviously he's hiding something. They don't know what it is, but he's hiding something. And frustrated, Kaylin is getting ready to go when Nigel comes into the room. He asks why she's leaving. She missed. She really came looking to get something from her mom, which she doesn't think she'll ever receive. And Nigel tells her that she should stay and that they can help her. But Kaylin says she has the science and she can do the work herself. And this is when Nigel presses a remote button and it locks the door and says, "Sorry, Frosty, you're not going anywhere." And Kaylin asks what he thinks he he's uh, doing and tries the door, but it's locked. She tells him to open it. He tells her he's sick of doing all the work and being stuck under Carla. Confessing the data, he'll collect, studying her as his ticket out, and that's why he's studying her, because, you know, it's his way out of here. And Kaylin tells him to let her out, that he's not going to test her. Nigel grabs her. Kaylin uses her powers to freeze his hand, which makes Nigel yell in pain. And, and Carla then comes in yelling for her to stop, and that this isn't her. Kaylin says that she doesn't know anything about her, which really she doesn't. I mean, she hasn't known her daughter for three years, and she definitely has changed. She's not even sounding like herself. Her eyes turn crisp blue. I mean, she's very slowly becoming Killer Frost here, and her mom says she didn't raise a killer. This gets Kaylin to look up at her and away from Nigel, and Carla says, you know, for whatever it's worth, she's sorry, and she finally apologizes to Caitlin, and this is the moment where Caitlin sees how sincere Carla is. Carla is actually able to subdue her here, and I love this. It returns to their now to her, to her natural brown hair color. The ice frost stops flowing from her hands. Kaylin says it means a lot. Finally, sharing a big hug with her mother. She tells Kaylin to go. She'll make sure no one finds out what happened. And just it was a really powerful scene overall. Getting more into their relationship, I think, really dissecting what they've been through really worked very well here. I really love the way that that all went, and it really made me care more for you know Kaylin's the character overall. I like where they're going with this storyline. Definitely, really good stuff there. I hope we see more of them because. Because if Carla's the one that can subdue her, I like where this is going. But we see back at Star Lab, Cisco's then going through HR's things. He finds a pen in which he's been making recordings. And this was very sketchy, just him making these recordings. I'm like, okay, what the hell's going on here? I thought that we were going to find out that HR is working with Alchemy. I thought that's what was going on here. But that's actually not going on. We'll talk about that. We see that they are discovered by HR. He admits his deep secret is that he's actually a novelist as well as a scientist, and I will admit this is a very lame twist. I really don't like this at all. He's little. He's a little upset about them not trusting him. A voice asks who they don't trust, and he says that it's Caitlin. And both Cisco and Barry are happy to see her, bring her up to speed quickly because they're getting another metahuman alert, and. It's brushed over immediately. I really was not that happy about this. I wanted to like more. I wanted to like this twist, but it just felt really convenient. It felt like this is the way to keep Tom Cavanaugh on. They could have easily done something where he is working with Alchemy or that he was, you know, knows Alchemy or something like that. But they just didn't really do that, and I feel like they definitely could have done that with this character. Just in general, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, this I of, of this of this idea. I think it had potential, but it just didn't really work. But basically, they get another metahuman alert. Flash races out. He finds a monster once more roaming downtown, and Cisco and HR decide to handle the beast the way that Luke took out the AT. AT and the Empire Strikes Back, which HR knows is Empire of the Sun, which that is by far one of the funniest things this entire episode is that there are so many things that HR knows differently than the way you or I do, and it works very well here. I thought that that joke in general really did work, but Barry attempts to do this. He discovers the monster's nothing more than a hologram, we find out, and 
Again, I found this to be just really dumb, honestly. I get what they were trying to do, but a hologram? Are you kidding me? Like, this was just stupid. The police and SWAT team was shown up. They're getting ready to fire on the monster. The Flash catches the fire bullet at, uh, fired before it hits an innocent bystander. Yells for them to stop. He realizes Julian has probably figured out the monster is a hologram and very believes he sees the person controlling the image in one of the nearby buildings. Julian's already there, gun drawn, instructing the perpetrator to step away from the computer. Julian fires his gun, but thankfully, Flash arrives just in time to stop the bullet from hitting its mark. Because it turns out the perpetrator is actually just a kid, we find out. He's a bullied young teen who wanted people to respect him for once, and he really did this as a way, as a, you know, as a means to get people to respect him. And Julian thinks the Flash as he's leaving. Joe takes over, gives the teen an earful, but also consoles him a little, telling him he's young and has time to turn everything around. And if you remember, Barry went through this exact thing in Season 1. It's not really something we've talked about in a while, but Barry, if you remember, was bullied. Barry is was kind of a nerd himself. I mean, he was bullied for it, so you definitely see... Joe definitely sees a lot of Barry in this kid, definitely. But in general, I just found this to be kind of silly. I, I really was not a fan of this. I think... They, if they would have maybe focused on this a bit more, honestly, I think it's something they could have focused on halfway through the episode. I would have totally gone into the idea of it. But because they barely focus on this and they're just randomly like, oh, it's a kid, just to me seemed like a very convenient way of wrapping things up. That way we never have to really talk about this again. And I'm glad we're not because I think it really was a dumb idea in the first place to do something like this. But really, that really did kill a lot of the episode for me and really did make a lot of this episode feel very pointless so in a way that the flash doesn't, and I'm hoping that they don't really do something like this again, because this really did not work in the way they wanted to. However, I do really like the way this episode ends. I think the ending of this episode really did make up for everything that went down. We see Team Flash finally talks out with HR after realizing that he was the only idea man and never really accomplished anything all his own on his Earth. And Wally rightfully calls him a con man. HR pleads, which he, you know, really is, and HR pleads with them to give him a chance to help him improve himself. So Team Flash is feeling generous. Barry tells him we'll give him a few weeks to see how it works out, but if it doesn't, back to Earth-19 he goes. And I like this. I like that they decided that they can trust him and everything, but I don't know. Just I, I like this character. I do. I like that he's wacky. I like that he's silly. I think he's going to take a while to gel, but again, I didn't really like the Wells of last season either. I thought overall he was kind of annoying, but I really did grow to like him, and I think HR is going to be the same way. My only concern is that I don't really like this whole thing where they're going with the book. I feel like there's definitely more going on there, but we'll have to see. I don't exactly trust him, but we'll have to see where that goes. But then we get to a very unexpected scene that I absolutely love. Barry goes to CCPD lab to pack up his stuff. He finds Julian, and he's actually brooding. And Julian tells Barry about what happened. He, he admits he can actually understand the teen's motivation. And what I loved about this scene is that going into the season, Julian, to me, seemed like a very cartoony kind of character. Just someone who's there to pick on Barry and get mad at him and just berate him for everything. But this scene really shows how human of a character Julian really is. And that's something that... I think a lot of these shows forget. Uh, Arrow definitely forgot it last season. There were a lot of characters that did not really come across as human to me. But Julian really did in this scene. You really do see his genuine concern and how human of a per how human he really is. And he confessed to Barry he has always felt like the odd one out first in his family, and now at the CCPD. And that is the reason why he's so against Barry, because Barry is so well-liked there. Barry's worked there forever. Everyone knows Barry. I mean, he's a lot, he, you know, does something wrong, he gets yelled at once. I mean, really, Barry has it really easily. Julian really doesn't. And Julian tells Barry to put his stuff back, that he doesn't want him to leave the lab. He said that he was wrong about the Flash. Maybe he's wrong about him, too. Julian's about to leave. Barry stops him, asks if he wants to go get a drink. And I really like this. I like that these two didn't fact bury the hatchet i like that it seems like moving forward they are going to be actual really good partners and i want to see this act i want to see an actual bond happen here i really could see this turning to a very genuine bond i like where this is headed and i haven't been too keen on the addition of julian on the show so far but if this is what they're going to do with him i really do like it and i really do love where they're headed with him overall because i think it's definitely the direction to go with him but then we get to the final scene here which this was very interesting Kaylin's watching a message from her mother on her computer. Looking concerned, her mom tells Kaylin that the one thing she knows for sure is that the more Kaylin uses her powers, the more they change her. And she tells her it's vital that she doesn't use her powers. And that's when Kaylin's eyes turn crystal blue 
Frost comes out of her hands, freezing the computer, effectively destroying it, and we basically get the sense that Caitlyn does not really have much control of her powers, and that is the way the episode ends. Really good stuff overall, but let's just get into this episode, because I definitely do have a lot to talk about. This episode overall was really well done. I really did like the way that they handled this one, but I will say that this was a very overstuffed episode. However, I liked it slightly more than Flashpoint. Flashpoint still is the weakest episode of the season because it just doesn't really matter at this point. At this point, nothing in that episode of context really uh, is needed. We're not really going to hear about it again, and this episode kind of the same, especially the whole thing going on with the teen, but the ending really made up for it. Julian's, you know, genuine concern and him and Barry turning things around real quickly, I'm really all for. I like where this is headed. I like that we really did focus a lot on their whole conflict, and we really did get into their ideals of, like, why they are so against each other, and I like that now things seem to be resolved between those two. I think it's a good direction for them to go. I don't want to see a whole season of just Julian not trusting Barry, and I like that already it seems like we're moving away from this. I could honestly see Barry bringing Julian to Team Flash by the end of this season. I mean, I think it's going to be probably, like, not even the halfway point. I think it's probably going to be, like, in an episode in, like, March or February, but I could definitely see that happening this season because it really does seem like Julian might just fit right in. Definitely I could see that happening, especially because he feels like someone that hasn't really found his purpose. I think that could honestly be a purpose is helping them with the flash but we'll have to see where that's gonna go really good stuff there the best stuff in this episode like i said by far is with caitlin i love everything that's going down with her First of all, now knowing she doesn't have any control of her powers, I mean, this really could end up bad for her. I mean, already, Cisco, you can tell, and Barry, they know that something more is going on. You know, they want to believe that she's okay, but I think as time goes on, they're going to start to realize that definitely something is going on there, and I think Dale and Pam Baker is absolutely killing it as this character right now. I think it's just made Caitlyn so much more interesting, and it's by far the best decision they've made, uh, besides Julian, in my opinion, of, you know, this new timeline. I really do love this idea that Caitlyn is Killer Frost, and that, you know, worse than that, she can't control her powers. It's sad to see but the fact that she's not going to be able to hide there for that much longer, I really do like. I like that eventually this is going to come out. I think it's probably going to come out mid-season, but we'll have to see. Definitely looking forward to seeing the way that's going to go, uh, because it really seems like she doesn't really like what's becoming of her, and I like that. I like that it's not that she enjoys this. You know, she really does not, and I like that Carla and her seem to be working side by side, but Carla can't really do much about it. I mean, even though Carla wants to, she can't really control her daughter, and it's sad to see, but I really do love where that's headed. Overall, really good stuff. And I like she genuinely felt bad for Caitlyn. I really did like the way that turned out. HR, I think this was a cool idea what they did with him. The fact that HR was very suspicious and he was acting very sketchy. Um, and the fact that, you know, he wasn't telling them anything. And even the whole thing with him being, you know, writing this book, I think there are good ideas there. We just didn't really focus it in the way I wanted to. I think HR as a character is so drastically different that we need to see a lot more of him before I really can decide how I feel about him. Right now, I like the guy. I think he's fun overall. But... I feel like there's definitely more going on. I feel like him being a novelist is just way too safe. I hope it's not that. I feel like it's going to be. I don't really know, but we'll have to see. Uh, overall, guys, I really enjoyed this episode. Didn't hate this one, but I didn't really love it either. I thought this was a good episode, not a great one. Uh, I think we really could have focused more on the monster storyline. Just that in general really did not work. I think in general that's just not really where the show needs to go. Hologram. To me, it really seems like the show is kind of running out of ideas when it comes to metahumans, and I think they kind of are. I really think they're running out of ideas there, which makes sense. I mean, when you do three seasons of the same old shit with metahumans, it makes sense why they might be running out of ideas. Is. But anyways, guys, in my review, let me know what you guys saw this episode overall. We don't have Flash for two weeks because next week's the election, so uh, nothing's on next week. So uh, that's in my review. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys uh, in my next review, which will be for Arrow, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.